afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. They are tiny and they are dangerous and they are all over the place. Our focus today is on ticks and mosquitoes and our guest is an expert on both. I want to welcome Vermont State Entomologist Judy Rozovsky with the Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets. Thanks so much for coming in. Lots to cover and lots to learn. Let's start with ticks. What kind of ticks do we have in Vermont and do they all bite humans? We have about 13 different species of ticks in Vermont and um, a number of them bite humans. Most of them though are host specific and they're often named after their, their host like the squirrel tick, the woodchuck tick, mm -hmm. the deer tick. But the deer tick unfortunately doesn't confine itself to just biting deer. Mm -hmm. So what ticks um, are most common or most dangerous we should say for humans? Great question. So, and I also shouldn't be calling it the deer tick. We are now calling it the black-legged tick. Okay. Um, formerly known as the deer tick, um, and that and the um, uh, the dog tick are two of the most commonly encountered in Vermont. But it's a deer tick that really um, carries the diseases that we are most concerned about. Mm -hmm. And we so. see here on our on our screen some examples of what those ticks look like. So tell us about the black-legged tick. Where do they live? What's their life cycle like? Sure. Well, they have a kind of complicated life cycle, so stop me when I'm boring you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they hatch as eggs, mm -hmm. then they, they, sorry, that was a completely <laughs> misput sentence. They are laid as eggs and the eggs hatch. Mm -hmm. Those hatch into larvae. Each subsequent life stage needs a blood meal, so the larvae need to find a host, attach to it, get a blood meal, then they'll drop off into the leaf litter, and they'll molt into the next life stage, which is a pupa. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> missed again, which is um, a nymph. Okay. Um, most insects actually go larvae to pupae, which is why I just automatically said that. So the nymph phase also needs a blood meal to become an adult. So the nymphs will find a host, grab on, mm -hmm. get a blood meal, drop off, and then um, morph into an adult. And the adult needs a blood meal in order to lay eggs. And the more blood she gets, the more eggs she can lay. So this is just an ongoing cycle. It is. And not only that, it can take place over one or two years. Really? So there's always some life stage in the pipeline, which is why it makes it so difficult to control ticks. And so the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reports that the number of tick-borne diseases has risen rapidly in Vermont. So does this mean that there are more ticks? Well, first of all, I should just quickly say it's not the number of diseases that have increased. It's the number of cases of reported diseases. Okay. So more cases of disease, diseases borne by ticks have been found in the state, but the approximate number of diseases is about the same. Mm -hmm. Just Sorry, semantic <laughs> issue. Now, I remember when I first moved to Vermont more than 30 years ago, there were no such thing as, as an issue with ticks. Right. So what's happened? Um, we're not totally sure why there's been this big expansion northward. And there are a number of ticks in the south, but they don't seem to cause the same kind of problems. So it's not clear if they have alternate hosts or what the issue might be. We certainly are seeing increasing numbers, and they're you know, expanding northward and it probably has to do with a change in climate mm -hmm. that the climates are milder um, and the reason that a mild climate helps the ticks is that it gives them a more of an opportunity to find a host and feed and move to that next life stage. Got it. So you have an, examples over here that uh, you brought in there. Right. We should mention they're not alive. <laughs> and so what are we looking at here? Um, so here we have a, um, a deer tick adult and then this is an engorged deer tick. So deer ticks as um, larvae are so small that you... I mean, you can hardly see it here. Right. I mean, I just yeah. Turn um, a little bit. And this is a big one. But then once they feed, they get even bigger. Yeah. So... And so uh, what do you recommend for folks when it comes to taking a tick off your skin? So the most important thing to think about in removing a tick, and you can get handy tick removal kits um, and use uh, little forceps in them, um, you want to grab it and pull it straight out. I know they're those twist-off ticks, but mm -hmm. it turns out that ticks um, regurgitate when they're stressed. And that would introduce pathogens. If they haven't already passed them on to you when they vomit, those will come out into your system, and you want to try to avoid that. So just take a nice firm grip and, and yank it. Pull right out. Okay, yep. so you have to kind of sneak up on it and just <laughs> grab it when it's right. not expecting well, it. Well, <laughs> or you can just calmly reach in, get a good hold, and pull it out. And it doesn't matter if the head is stuck because once it's 
the body is ripped off, it's dead. Okay, and you so. and you use you have alcohol pads there. You clean right. the area off. Yes, that's very important. Um, you can use different antiseptic swabs or soap and water works, anything like that. And should people save the ticks? Um, they can if they want. You can stick them in a bag and throw them in your fridge. And then if you see a rash developing, you can get it tested. But some tests have false positives, so don't panic. Mm -hmm. um, it's best just to, you know, if you have found a tick on you, just pay attention to what's going on with you. And if you do have symptoms, then go see a health professional and tell them that you had a tick bite. Okay. Are there locations in Vermont that have more ticks than others? Um, we have found some places that have more ticks than others, but you know it's hard to do an exhaustive survey of the whole area. Um, I know the Agency of Agriculture has conducted. Um, we've trying to get to every town in the state to just determine if they have ticks, and then we collect them and find out what diseases they have, just so we have a sense of the distribution of ticks and diseases in Vermont. Mm -hmm. Now, if we don't find ticks, it doesn't mean they aren't in that town. It just means we didn't find them in that place. But I do remember we went to Thetford, and there were an unusually large number of ticks in the area where we were surveying. No kidding. Yeah. And so um, you mentioned that they have to feed for every stage, every life cycle stage. So does that mean that you know all spring, summer, and fall this is going on? Yep. But um, the seasonality. Um, varies a bit because certain life stages are more active in particular times of year. And so I think the nymphs are out in the spring, um, and then they get a blood meal, become adults, lay their eggs, and then the larvae can emerge. Um, and the larvae are more active in the summer, mm -hmm. but they're small. And they usually are on smaller hosts. Okay, like mice or right, exactly. Or yep, exactly. Okay. And then, um, and then again in the fall, um, those larvae will then be looking for um, another meal. host, yeah. right? So spring and fall, oh, spring, really. right? Yeah, and the adults will also be looking. Be again, it's complicated because they have this sort of two-year life cycle that can vary in length. Right. Um, but the peak activities are usually in the spring and the fall for the ones that are going to attack or get on people. So you're in tick habitat all the time. What do you use to keep ticks away? Um, I usually wear a pair of boots and I spray the tops of them with permethrin. Okay, we have some examples here. Of, That's this right. Is, um, this is one, one item that's available for people to buy and it's permethrin's right there. Um, and it, you put it on your clothes. Yep, you can actually spray, I was going to say take your clothes off, but no. <laughs> you spray your clothes when you're not in them mm -hmm. um, and let them dry, yep. and then you can put them on and that will work. You can also purchase permethrin-treated clothing um, and just note how many times you can wash them before that wears off. Okay, now these products have um, DEET. One has 25% DEET, the other is 40% DEET. What's, what's the difference and what would you recommend? I just read a quick study that was talking about DEET at 23% that was completely effective in repelling insects. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not of the opinion that you need to have a very high concentration. DEET is a very effective insect repellent. Mm -hmm. So it's up to people's own personal preference if they want to spray it on them. I usually spray stuff on my clothes and not on my skin. And I wear long pants and a long sleeve shirt, right. hat. Yep. And do you recommend if people like tuck in their pants or? or um, yeah, I tend to do that in my when I wear the boots. I tuck in my pants, and then, you know, it's a harder rubber boots are a harder surface for the ticks to climb up on. Mm -hmm. That's my theory, anyway. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about um, the tick removal again because we have a, a picture on what to do and what not to do. Okay. Um, so right. if you find a tick on your body, obviously if it hasn't bitten you yet, right. you know, just pick it off and uh, dispose of it. What? Right. Flush it or something. Yep. And, uh, but if it has bitten you and it's stuck to you, pull it straight out. Don't poke at it, don't twist. Right. And so, and you don't necessarily have to go to a doctor's office and just get it out and then right. and use an antiseptic on the area. Exactly. Now I know that there are a lot of um, ways to prevent tick bites, which obviously you can use products or not, but mm -hmm. also I've heard advertisements for companies that will come and spray your yard with, um, you know, something that will keep ticks away. Is that, do you think that's effective? Um, I find that outdoor sprays tend not to be effective because they're broken down by UV light or rain or wind can disperse them or they don't get complete coverage. But I know some people swear by them, so um, whatever. I would say if you're having an event like a wedding in your yard and you're worried, mm -hmm. then sure, go ahead and do that. But, you know, ticks, um, they're trying to maintain a 
decent moisture level, so when it's hot, they're not going to be around, and they'll get under stuff, so that's just going to protect them from any kind of material, and even if it has a residual sticking power, they're not necessarily going to encounter it. So you can protect your yard. Um, one recommendation, and there's a very good handbook that the Connecticut Agricultural Experimental Station puts out, mm -hmm. um, or you can just search, you know, control ticks in your yard. Um, you want to get rid of your vegetation. The less vegetation, the better. You want sunny spaces. You can just pick an area of your yard that you want to make tick-free. Um, keep the lawn mowed. Um, some people suggest putting a moat, like a three-foot moat of either um, mulch or stone around the perimeter of your yard. Mm -hmm. And many of the ticks will be found between the edge of your lawn and the first nine feet into the woods. Okay. So if you just want to make a nice sunny patio or something that doesn't have vegetation, doesn't have hiding places, is hot and dry, that Perfect. will keep the ticks off of there. Let's talk about another favorite, mosquitoes. How's oh, yeah. this year been for mosquitoes? Uh, some people think it's been horrible. Um, so again, it depends on location. You know, wet, swampy, low-lying places are going to have a lot. You get a rain event and then two weeks later you'll have a big mass of mosquitoes that can hang around for a couple of weeks. So um, I'm hearing a lot of complaints from people, or I was earlier, um, but in other places it was hot and dry and things Not a were problem. fine. Not the a Zika problem. virus was all over the news last year. Is Zika likely to become more widespread as time goes by? Um, possibly. Uh, um, Theory is that it was spread um, in part by the way products are moving around the world now in a global economy. You know, say you have tires, used tire markets, or mm -hmm. bamboo products that can have pools of water and they carry them around. Um, Zika, the mosquitoes that carry Zika are somewhat cold intolerant, so we're not really likely to get them up here. We are looking for them, but um, this isn't really their range. In recent years, equine encephalitis, or triple E, has shown up in Vermont. What do you want Vermonters to know about that disease? Um, that's a deadly disease. We want to be really careful about that. We do, um, we run a mosquito collecting and testing program to see if we have a triple E. Um, if that does come out, you know, we'll have a press release and we'll work closely with the Vermont Department of Health to try to alert people. Um, and in that case, you should be really careful and take as many precautions as you can, vaccinate your animals, you know, don't go out without having some kind of protection. Um, Even though it's called equine encephalitis, it can affect humans. It can, yep. What kind of monitoring is done in Vermont and what does monitoring tell scientists like you? So um, the Department of, or the Agency of Agriculture conducts um, a testing program and I think last year we had um, 103 different sites in about 83 different towns and we're doing something comparable this year and we have um, traps out for specific species of mosquitoes because we have about 45, oh no, last year we found a new species of mosquito. So we have 46 species of mosquito in the state, um, but we're really focusing on the ones that are the disease carrying mm -hmm. organisms. So, And so what do you recommend as a, a mosquito repellent? Um, you know, same thing, clothing, put repellents on it, your repellent of choice, and there's a whole gamut of stuff you can use. You can use, you know, um, the natural oil ones, mm -hmm. you can use permethrins, you can use DEET. Um, when we go out and do the trap runs, uh, we often wear nets that, you know, are sort of full mm -hmm. upper body nets um, that work quite well. So, um, you know, it depends on the density of mosquitoes. Obviously, we're trapping where there are a lot of mosquitoes, so you're looking for mosquitoes. We're looking for mosquitoes and we're not looking for trouble, so we wear good protection. And what do you have to tell folks who are watching this and, and locking their doors and <laughs> closing their windows and saying, I'm not going outside at all? Right. Um, it's easy to get scared and, you know, I just think with some basic precautions that don't really change your lifestyle that much, you can keep yourself safe. It's just common sense and I know Vermonters are great at common sense. Mm -hmm. You know, just don't go out there and expect that you'll be safe. You do need to take some minimal precautions, wear a repellent, wear long sleeves and long pants, especially if you're going in a place where you know there are going to be ticks. Which is mostly the woods. Mostly the woods, yep. Right. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's great information. Yeah, I hope I help educate some people. And Definitely. I'm glad you like my friends. I, I do. I'm <laughs> glad that they're not alive. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.